All right, so you're back with Brian in the Apex Gamer Channel, and if you read the title, you obviously know that this is another in the lab. We're doing it on a Monday because I started work on it actually on Sunday, so I'm trying to get this to you as soon as possible. But as you see right there in the replay, deadly body kicks. So we're in the lab, we're looking out, and we're going to see what causes these fighters that I'm about to talk about to have the deadliest body kicks in the game. Now, I'm not saying that they're the completely, well, I'm saying that by all intents and purposes, by all things in game that we're going to look at, these fighters that we're about to talk about, it's a list of seven, I think, one being the least effective, one being the most effective. Obviously, the one that you see right now laying it into Travis Brown's body is the most effective. That's Alistair Overeem. But when we take a look at the fighters on the uh, fighter select screen, I'll tell you why they're the most effective, and I'll go through it right now. Here we start in here. So take a look at Alistair Overeem. First and foremost, we're going to go to his perks. He's got the El Wapo perk. That's the perk that all these fighters have in common. The El Wapo perk means that their roundhouse kicks, which we're talking about the liver kick, we're talking about the boss rooting style liver kick, that's most effective with that El Wapo perk. They, he has a 94 power with a 99 switch stance, so that means he can get to your liver either way. Strike speed of 93 with a strike stamina of 91. His strike move levels, he's got a level 2 lead kick and a level 3 rear kick to the body. He's got combo He's got the combo packages for the Muay Thai and for the kickboxing combos. So he has level five Muay Thai combos and level two kickboxing combos. So he has about 30 combos in the game that he can throw. And I'm going to show you those later in the video. But I'm showing Travis Brown here because Travis Brown is the person that this strategy will be most effective against because Travis Brown has the lowest body health in the division. I want to kind of give you both sides of the coin where this fighter is successful versus what type of person he'll be most successful against. As you saw, Travis Brown was the first one I showed. He had the lowest body health. Now, the second lowest I'm going to show in most cases is going to be the same way for each fighter. The second lowest I'm going to show is the fighter who has the slowest striking speed. And I'm going to talk about that at the end, sort of when I'm wrapping it all up and kind of telling you where this fits in line with uh, actual playing the game. So he has the slowest striking speed, which means he's less likely to counter uh, anytime you're going for body shots. Of course, I'm, I'm going to go through that, like I said, later in the video. I'm going to go through that and kind of go through why, where this is effect, where this is effective and where this is, isn't effective. So let's go ahead and skip to the next person. The next person on this list might be a little bit far down on the list in comparison to all the rest of the roster because I went through the entire roster looking for this specific setup of things. So we're going to Luke Rockhold in middleweight. He's got the level three El Wapo perk, just like Alice Overeem has the level three El Wapo perk. His, uh, his, Power stat, which I'm about to pull up all that on screen. I, obviously, this isn't live. I'm recording over the footage, which I should have done it live. I don't know why I didn't do it live in the first place. But he has the El Wapo level 3 perk. He has the 93 for power, 87 for switch stance, and he has a 95 strike speed and a 91 strike stamina. He also has a level 2 lead body kick, but a level 4 rear kick. So his level 4 kick is more successful than Alistair Overing, but where he does not, where he is not the better you know, better here is because his switch stance stat is so low that if someone were to, you know, notice that you're trying to kick their liver, they switch stances. Now you're in effect. You're less effective than you were before, because if you switch stances, he has a trade off. He goes down to 87. So that's not it's not exactly the best um, best scenario to be in. But he does have the level four rear kick, but his combo levels. He only has a level one Muay Thai combo, which is a combo package that mostly shows body kicks. And he has a level two for the, the kickboxing combo. So he only has six total combos in the game that he can use to get to your body. So he's that's why I put him second in this list because he's the he's least effective than Alistair Overeem. Obviously, Overeem has the most effective because he has literally 30 combos he can get to. I'm showing Christoph Yachto on screen here because he is the fighter with the lowest body health in the division. And now I'm showing Dan Kelly because Dan Kelly is the fighter with the lowest uh, the lowest strike speed in the division and slightly higher body health than Christoph Yachto. But the reason I'm showing Dan Kelly, the reason I show is the fighter with the lowest strike speed is because once I start to tell you about where this is ineffective, you'll see why the need for only doing this against certain types of people or only even having this as a focus against certain types of people will make sense because you, you'll get it towards the end. Like this, this whole, this whole le lesson or narrative will wrap up towards the end. But let's go ahead and go to the next fighter who has this available and who is um, who will have some moderate success here. Well, you know, like obviously these are the people who can kick your body the hardest, and that's why I'm going through this list and showing you the ones who can absolutely kick you to the body the hardest because they're set up. All the in-game information is leading towards them having the best body kick. I literally went through the game, scoured the game, looked at all the stats, looked at all the perks, and this is the ones I came up with. Anthony Pettis also has a level 3 El Wapo perk. Let's go ahead and skip forward to his stats. He's got the level 3 power, but a level 91 switch stance. So 
unlike Overeem, he's not 100% effective from the switch stance, which he should be because Pettis mostly switches stances to kick. So he's most effective once he switches to the southpaw stance from the orthodox stance uh, with kicking, but not so with punching. But with kicking from southpaw, he's more effective. So he should have a higher switch stance stat than that. But the 91 is serviceable. He does have a, he has a level 2 lead kick and a level 4 rear kick, similar to Luke Rocco in that way. He's also similar to Luke Rocco in the sense that he has the same level Muay Thai combos, and but he has the same level Muay Thai combos as Luke Rocco. So he only has five Muay Thai combos that lead to kicks of the body, but he has two kick combos that aren't Muay Thai kick combos, but they don't necessarily land the body kick. They're um they're those kickboxing combos where you miss the kick and then throw a spinning heel kick or something like that. So he has two of those in the kickboxing combo package level four. So I'm not going to really show those off, but the person who's most acceptable to this in this division is obviously Donald Cerrone. He's had the most history of having um not being able to take shots to the body, but he's most effect he's most affected by getting kicked to the body, but he is absolutely not the one you want to try it on because he's got a 93 strike speed so he's a he's like he's a catch 22 like you can hurt his body if you can get to it but you got to kind of wane through fire to get there but gilbert burns on the other hand has the has a pretty low body health stat not the lowest in the division but he has a really low striking speed stat like i said in the when i talk about where this is successful it's going to tie it all together and you'll understand then but Gilbert Burns with that lower striking speed, so you will be able to get this off. And like you'd have to see a Gilbert Burns online. He does have like a, I think he has like an eighty six body health, so it's not common. But there, there's a few guys in the division that also have body health that are similar. Now let's go ahead and jump to the next guy, who's probably less expected and probably not even on your radar for body kicks or just not even on your radar for picking in general. Like, but he is another fighter who, who fits the El Wapo challenge. You know, he got the El Wapo perk. He fits the he fits the criteria. He fits the build. It took me a little while to scramble to his name. But here we are. We're looking at, well, I skipped him again. Well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I, I told you I should have did this live. I don't know why I did it the way I did it, but should have did it live. We're looking at Johnny Eduardo, um, Novo Onyao, Muay Thai. He's got, the, he's got the same El Wapo perk that everybody else has got, but he's got level three. Same as everybody else. He's got an 89 power, which isn't really high. He has an 86 switch stance, which is relative to his power, but not, of course, not super high. He's not like a really high ranked fighter, so I don't expect him to have that much level of success here. He only has a level two lead and rear kick, so he's not as effective as the other two, all the other three you've seen so far on the list. But he does also fit the build for this type of play style, this type of mindset, looking for this avenue of success. So he does fit that build. He has level three. Um, uh, Muay Thai combos and he has level one kickboxing combos so he doesn't have any kickboxing combos that lead to body kicks but he has 16 kickboxing uh, Muay Thai combos that lead to body kicks and when I talk about the combos in the later section of the video I'll tell you which ones um, which ones are in tandem because obviously Overeem has a level five Pettis has a level one you know so I'll go through that and then I'll go through that in the later section but Holsworth is the most acceptable to body kicks pretty much in this division he's got the lowest body health and his striking speed is tied for the lowest so he's the most acceptable but when i when like i was saying about the about the combo move levels the combo package levels i'll explain that as i'm going through them which ones each which ones each category of fighter will still be accessible to well because most of these fighters either have a level five which over him is the only one with the level five everybody else has either level one two or three and uh pettis and rocco have level one he has level three, so he has 16 possible combos to get to your body. Mitch Guyon is the other guy uh, who's acceptable to Johnny Eduardo because his strike speed stat's so low. So because his strike speed's so low, you'll be able to get off the kicks more often and not run into as many counters. I'll talk about that, like I said, in the later section because I'm going to briefly kind of glaze over this stuff while we're working towards the, the combos that they all have in common or the combos that are successful for this attack. So Mitch Guyon, slow strike speed. Similar to everybody else's secondary, most vulnerable target, you know, their target opponent for this play style. Um, let's go ahead. We're going to jump down to the flyweight division. The next person in the flyweight division that has this ability is also Ben Wynn. Ben Wynn has the El Wapo perk. I don't know why I opened it and then closed it, but he has the El Wapo perk, but he only has a level two El Wapo perk. So that is lower than everybody else so far on this list. He has the lowest level El Wapo perk in the game, with that being a level two. No one has above level three El Wapo in the game. His power. Uh, his power stats are 90. His switch stance is an 80. So he can get you from one of those stances, but he, he's not going to be as effective once you switch stances to try to avoid getting kicked in the liver. So if you're an orthodox fighter and he switches to southpaw, if you're playing against a Ben Wynn that switches to southpaw, he's looking to he, – he's not going to be able to be as effective, so you don't have to worry about it as much. He has a level 2 lead kick, level 
uh, level two lead kick, level two rear kick. He only has combo package for Muay Thai, but he has a level three combo package for Muay Thai. So like I said, for Johnny uh, Eduardo, he has 16 combos for level three. And when I go through those, I'll kind of talk to you about where those players are, where those different characters uh, fall in line. But Juicy A Famiga is his most vulnerable target because he has the lowest body health and division, which is ironic because Juicy A Famiga KO'd him. So it's ironic that that's the way that played out. But I didn't plan for this. I just went through the stats, and this is just the information that I was able to gather by going through the stats. Just in any way, like I just did what anybody else at home can do: just sit through your, sit through the game, and just toggle through the stats and look for avenues for success. And just kind of figure this stuff out. But you see, Amiga is the first target for body shots from Ben Win uh, or body kicks. We're really, just looking at the roundhouse kicks of the body, honestly, because there's a different perk for spinning kicks. And Justin Scoggins is the second on the list because he has the slowest striking speed at flyweight, which is crazy. It's crazy. I don't really know Justin Scoggins to be a slow striker in real life, but he has the slowest striking speed in this division. So that makes him the most susceptible to being kicked, but not necessarily being hurt the most by the kicks. So let's move down. We're moving down the list still. We're still headed towards the bottom, the person who has the least potential. But right now we're hitting the second most least potential, but Marion Renault. But she's in a pretty good situation because Marion Renault has a level three El Wapo perk. She has a she has a 90 power with an 80 switch stance. So she's also not as effective from the switch stance, like uh, kind of similar to Ben Wynn, kind of similar to uh, to um, Luke Rockhold and Johnny Awarder, who are less effective from that switch stance. But she has level two kicks on lead and rear, and she has a Muay Thai combo package of a level three, which means she'll have about 16 combos, like I said, for a couple of the other fighters. She'll have 16 combos that she can utilize to get to your body. But she doesn't have any kickboxing combos, but like that's not really that big of a factor. Like I said, for several of these guys who have the kickboxing combos, very few of these actually have body kicks in them. She has an 88 striking speed with an 87 stamina. So she's not in the best situation statistically, but she does have the potential for the body kicks to be lethal. And that's really all we're looking for. We're looking for the combination of all these different little things adding up. And her most vulnerable target is Leslie Smith. She has the lowest body health in the division. So that's her most vulnerable target. But Leslie Smith also has similar or actually higher speed stat. So she's more of a threat you know, you got to be real careful. Like you can get to if you can get to Leslie Smith's body, you can hurt her, but you got to be careful. And her second most susceptible target based on this criteria that we've established is Ashley Evan Smith because she has the lowest striking speed in the division. So that makes her a little bit more of a target to these to the body attack from uh, from Marion Renault, which it, it makes sense. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It's kind of it kind of puts these people in a situation where they have a little bit of trouble, but I'm going to talk about that in the late section as to the level of effectiveness that this actually has. Cause this is just, this is hypothetical that you were in the best situation and that you have a really good body attack and you're able to be successful, but let's jump down a division. We're going to jump down and we're going to look at the last person on this list who has the El Wapo perk. And that's Jessica Aguilar. For whatever reason, Jessica Aguilar has the perk as well. She has a level three version of the perk, but Let's go through her stats real quick and show you why that this she is the least effective with this. Even though she has the perk, she is least effective. She has an 87 power. She has 87 power with an 80 switch stance. So not good on power, not good on switch stance. 87 strike speed with an 87 strike stamina. Just literally at the bare bottom of potential for striking. So this is not the strategy for her. Even though she has the perk, her kicks are level one apiece lead and rear she doesn't have any combo packages for muay thai or kickboxing so she literally has one combo that you can use to get to the body and it's literally just the jab lead body i mean rear body kick that's her only avenue to getting to the body behind something like not throwing a naked body kick her only avenue is to get to the body that way so when i talk about it in the late section as to where this is successful you'll see where she can still possibly gut it out and get a win with the body kick because i'll tell you when i tell you that the information when i give you the information at the end you'll understand where she can possibly maybe hypothetically still be successful it ain't it ain't something that she's gonna be doing you ain't gonna see a jessica aguilar online who gonna run at you and hit you with a body kick and body rock you and then force you into a bad situation Ain't going to happen. Not with that setup. But these seven people do have the most potential to cause you damage to the body. Let's look at the opponents. Kylan Curran, you saw her quickly. I briefly glazed over it because Kylan Curran is the slow, uh, has the least body health in the division. And J uh, Alex Chalmers has the least body health. She has low body health and the slowest striking. So that's her two people that she can take advantage of the situation with the easiest. So we're going to jump forward to the next section. We're going to look at all the Muay Thai combos that this works with. So... 
the first ones I'm going to list, combo number eight, the one you're seeing on screen right now, that combo is, uh, these are going to be the ones that are, are, are in all combo packages. Level one, level five, all of them will have these, the ones that you're seeing on screen that have body kicks in them. So combo level eight is the straight and body roundhouse. Then combo level 10 is the straight and lead body roundhouse. Now we're looking at the lead hook. Uh, lead hook body roundhouse which is 12 for it, in combo package 5 is number 12 but in combo package 1 is number 10 so if you have combo package 1 you still have these combos if you have any package other than well 1 is the lowest so you have all these combos the ones that I'm showing you on screen right now so when you see combo level combo number 17 should be jab jab body kick here we go let's see if it's uh, jab jab rear hump roundhouse to the body that's combo level that's combo number 17 which is in all packages we're going to go to the next one, which is uh, combo number 25. You'll see that one right now. So we're taking around. We're skipping to it. Combo number 25 starts off with a lead body kick into the straight punch. That's one of the more commonly seen and commonly used combos for body kicks, inside leg kicks, and head kicks. It's for people to throw that lead kick and then follow it with the straight. It's a little... I have my I have mixed feelings about that. But let's go to the next combo, which is combo number 27, which is the jab straight, then lead, uh, then lead body roundhouse kick. That combo is common in combo package level two so we're, we're the section now where level two combos are the ones we're looking at the ones who level two and above will have so that one is one the level two and above will have this is also one jab straight body roundhouse kick so the jab straight body roundhouse kick common combo it's uh but it's common to everybody who has level two so people like anthony pettis don't have access to this even though this is the same side combo which is similar to stuff that he does in real life but he doesn't have access to this because he only has level one but level two anybody with level two and above will have these combos so Moving over to the straight jab, then body roundhouse kick. So a little different. It's a flip on the inside. It's a little different. But like I said, everybody with level two has that. Everybody I listed in this video that has level two also has these combos, which was few because it was like level one and then only one person level two. So whatever. So, so we're looking at the next combo, which is the straight lead hook rear roundhouse kick to the body. This is also common between level two and above. It's a really nice one, especially if you catch somebody with a straight uh, as a counter and you can throw the rear hook. I mean, the lead hook and the body roundhouse kick. If they're expecting a three strike combo to all be head strikes, that body shot will catch them surprise every time. Now we're going to look at the combos that are only uh, only except only accessible for people with level three and above. First one is the lead jab, lead hook, body roundhouse kick. That's the uh, that's the first one of the of the five or six that are shared between level three and every level past level three. So. That's the first one. The next one we're going to look at is combo number 53, which is the jab rear hook lead body roundhouse kick. That's also common to level three and level five and all the levels above three. So that's common as well. Good to uh, good to know that that information is there. I went through the game. I literally went through everybody's combo. I went through all the combo packages in create player and listed them on my computer and then figured out which ones were common. So. Here's the next one, jab, rear, uppercut, lead, roundhouse kick to the body. Anybody with level three or higher. So Overeem obviously has all of these, but anybody with level three or higher will have access to this, which was a few people. Wasn't a whole bunch. Let's take a quick look at who did have level three or higher. Um, just Marion Renault and Johnny Eduardo. So outside of Marion Renault and Johnny Eduardo, that's the only people who have access to these combos. So the next one on the list, we're looking at the lead hook, straight punch, lead, body, roundhouse kick. That's combo number 56. That one is also a really good one because if you can counter off the lead hook, especially when somebody's slipping to the outside, the lead hook straight and then body roundhouse kick is a wonderful combo for someone who's slipping too much to the outside. They're slipping, 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 doing the whole Dempsey roll. You catch them with that lead hook straight body roundhouse kick. It's going to be nasty. So we skip down. We skip down to the jab, jab, straight body roundhouse kick. Now we're looking at the jab, jab, straight rear roundhouse kick. We looked at the lead kick before. Now we're looking at the jab, jab, straight into the rear kick, which is the kick on the same side as the straight punch that ends the combo. And that is going to be the last one that's um, the last one that level three has access to. Now, everything we see from here on out, only Overeem has access to as far as the people on this list level combo number 61, which is the jab, straight lead hook rear roundhouse kick. That's the first one on the list that he has access to. So he basically has all the he has all the one, all the two, three and four strike combos and. People who don't have uh, level four or above don't have the four strike combo. So we're looking at the second one he has access to, which is a jab, lead, uppercut, rear roundhouse kick, which is super tricky, especially if someone tries to block the jab and tries to hurry up and duck to get underneath your next strike. If they think that they're gonna duck uppercut you, that one is gonna is gonna run them every time because it's a jab, uppercut, then the body kick. So we're looking at the next combo on the list, which is combo number sixty seven. 
It's the straight to the body lead hook body roundhouse. This is something that I need to train because I do that straight to the body lead uppercut all the time. And uh, it would be nice if I started hitting people with that combo, but I have to make sure that it's available to the fighter that I'm using. So we're looking at 69 now, though. 69 is the rear hook lead hook body roundhouse. This, as many times as people throw rear hooks into lead hooks, you would think you would see this combo all day because that's how people play online. But that combo should be more it should be more accessible because uh that's people do that people do that all the time so we're looking at 74 now which is the lead leg kick into the body roundhouse beautiful combo but you for a little while it was pretty spammy online people were using it pretty recklessly and pretty just aggressively because it's super safe even if you check the leg kick the body roundhouse still comes up so it's a weird kick it's a weird combo but it, it is there and it's available for people like over him to use uh, number, combo number 80, 81 is the next one we're looking at. We're looking at the uh, lead roundhouse to the body, and it ends with a roundhouse kick to the head. Now, this doesn't necessarily fit the bill for combos that end in the roundhouse kick, but it starts with a roundhouse kick, so it does have the same potential to stun someone with the roundhouse kick and really hurt them. So let's skip down to 85, which is the straight lead hook straight, then lead body roundhouse kick, which is a beautiful combo that could probably use be used pretty well off of a off of a pull counter. If you're able to pull counter a hook and land the straight hook straight into the body roundhouse kick, this is probably a really good combination for that so that's something to kind of keep in your mind's eye that that's something that's probably pretty successful then we're going to skip into the next one which is i think combo number 86 no 80 88 88 is the next one i can barely read it on my screen but we're looking at the lead hook straight or what yeah 86 we're looking at the straight lead hook rear hook lead rounding hooks kick to the body which is crazy it's a little bit harder like these four strike combos do require a little bit more execution so they do they do take a little bit more effort because you are gonna have to press a whole bunch more buttons like that one there was the hook straight and you know hook and then body roundhouse kick so it does take a lot more effort to throw a lead hook straight punch than another lead hook so now we're skipping down i think we're skipping down the 91 which should be the lead hook straight lead uppercut body roundhouse kick which is like i said it is pretty input heavy and if you're able to land this on someone you are truly on a world on a plane of your own because it's very hard to hit anybody with even a two punch combination much less a four punch combination unless they just stand there and try to block the whole thing in which case they're messing up they're mucking up big time if they try to block this combo because when that body kick hits it's at the end of the combo and their arms are already going to be in some pretty good trouble because this does have mixed trajectory striking in it so their block is going to be in some pretty bad trouble and then their, their body shot the body shot's going to really really do some damage even if they blocked all the shots to the head and the body shot landed so now we're skipping down to uh combo number 93 which i think is the or yeah it's the lead hook uppercut or yeah no it starts with the uppercut yeah so that that one's a bit tricky that one takes a bit more execution like I said, a lot of these four strike combos are going to take a lot more execution. You're going to have to be a lot more uh, meticulous with your with your execution to get these to really work against someone. But these are the ones that are only are accessible for Overeem in this list. That one is pretty wild too. That one starts off with a lead hook, a lead uppercut, and it goes into a rear hook. So that one's a bit a bit much. That's combo number ninety nine, which is the second to last combo that he has access to that anybody else has. Is that lead uppercut, rear hook, lead hook, body kick, super nasty super got a lot going on and we're looking at the straight the very last combo which is combo number 100 which is a straight body lead body roundhouse into a rear roundhouse kick to the head that one's a little less likely for you to use but if you were to use it it is on the table it's something to look forward to and something you might be able to pull off on your opponent so that's all the combos i kind of went through and i went through them really quickly so hopefully you're able to catch on to which ones were locked off by level if you need that information past this point i can make that available for you if you need that because i do have it in written form already so if i were to have to make that available just let me know in the comment section and i'll let i'll get that to you as soon as possible but let's take a look at where this all ties together obviously i wouldn't give advice to someone to use something that is overpowered and this is not at by any means or any stretch of the imagination overpowered literally this is probably the most underpowered situation to be in even though people like Overeem have a lot of kick potential he has a lot of kicks on the table that he can throw out a lot of combinations that end in kicks literally 30 combos he can perform in game that either end in a body kick or incorporate a body kick so you would think that that means that he's very successful but realistically the max damage punish in this situation for anything the max damage punish is if you slip counter uh land a body kick as a slip to a head kick that's the only thing i've seen in the game that was like okay that did a lot of damage other than that 
it's all pretty much fair game. It's, it's really hard to land body shots. Like the safest way to do this anyway, the safest way to get this even successful, even remotely is to be able to counter hit. Like if you do, if you're not doing any of the pressuring combos, like the one, two, three body kick or the one, two, one body kick, if you're not using any of the pressuring combos that people like Ben Wynn or Marion Renault or Overeem have access to, if you're somebody like Anthony Pettis or, or uh, somebody like, uh, like, like Luke Rockhold who could only throw the two shot combos, then you're not then your only way of being successful with this is to be able to hit off a counter hit with a jab or a lead hook that's the only way this is going to work is if your jab is a counter hit and then you land the body kick before your opponent blocks and it's not that they can't block because if you try this against the ai they will get their hands up and they will block it almost 90 percent of the time but a, a player is a little less likely to block body coming off of a jab counter hit they're going to always think that you're coming up with a with a four or if not you can mix in the counter hit jab into the four punch which is your rear hook and then switch it up and then come back with the counter hit to the body with the body kick. Obviously the fighters with the level two body combos or the level two kick, Muay Thai combos will have some of the pressuring combos, the combos that you can actually move at your target and land stuff in combination and put them on their heels. So Ben Wynn has that, has that ability. Ben Wynn has the ability to put the pressure on you like that. Marion Renault has that same ability and Johnny Eduardo. So other than them, Overeem's the only other person with this strategy that fits into this, that fits the build, you know, that fits this mindset and can do those sorts of torts of things and sorts of kind of come at you and put you in some bad situations. So the reason I said that this strategy, for one, is not overpowered because it's super hard to do. It, there's very limited avenues for success. Obviously, only seven fighters in the game even have all of the same tools and all of the same things in their wheelhouse to be successful doing this. So with that limitation for being for one let's take a look at where it's vulnerable at we're not gonna i'm not gonna show you all the situations that is vulnerable but i'll talk about them i'll talk about them at length i guess not really like talk too much but you're literally vulnerable to get this you're vulnerable to almost everything <laughs> so this strategy the reason it's not overpowered is because it is literally vulnerable to everything it's vulnerable to everything from the kick catches to literally all the head kicks all the head kicks in game, teep, spinning, roundhouse, ducking, roundhouse, all the head kicks in this game come out faster than the body kicks. Like So if you stand up, stand up, squat up, try to hit somebody with a stationary body kick, all the head kicks are faster than it. All of them. So you're going to get kicked in the head if you start throwing too many body kicks. It's going to become very obvious and someone's going to bounce a head kick off your head real fast. So that's why the pressuring combos are a little bit more successful. That's why I said it's only really successful off a, bounder, uh, by, uh, off a counter hit. The teep kicks to the body also can counter your body kick. So even if someone so if someone sees you pick up your leg for a body kick, they teep kick your body, it's going to knock you out of that body kick. Or if they move forward with a teep kick to the body, it's going to knock you out of it every time. And a lot of guys see the body kick sometimes coming and they time it with moving strikes or they time it with hooks. So it's literally vulnerable everywhere. And it's super vulnerable. When you when you get hit going for a body kick in this game, body kick or leg kick, if you actually get countered doing it, it's almost a done deal. So this strategy is very niche. It's not very powerful. I think it's actually underpowered, especially for someone like Overeem. It's incredibly underpowered for Mike Overeem for his body kick to be so so much slower that almost everyone in the division has enough speed to counter it with a head kick. So I do feel that this strat's a little bit underpowered, especially for someone like especially for someone like him, because he literally has all the chips tipped in his favor. He has the level three perk. He has the level ninety four power with a ninety nine switch stance, so he can get to your liver no matter which stance you're in. He's got all the combos available he has literally 29 combos that incorporate body kicks literally 29 and his power and his stamina and his strike speed are all geared for him to be a true threat to your body but like i said you have a limited avenue like literally it has to be off a counter hit because you can be countered by everything because the body kicks are so slow and then the kick catch is so good that you are literally you're at odds using this, this strategy but I did want to do a case study. I wanted to take a look at a perk and read what the perk said and then try to figure out who can really maximize on this perk. And you know, this is an interesting look, an interesting way to look at the game because like I said, if if some if y'all say that y'all want the want the static information that I gathered, I can make that information available the way I the way I gathered it on my computer. I can make it available so you can see all of it and kind of um be able to see it all tangibly, you know, in a way that's like printable or savable, you know, you'll be able to tangibly see it. But I went through and literally tried to find every avenue that that can be successful. 
and I narrowed it down. And then when I came out of the whole thing, I came out of it. I tried it against the AI several times against legendary AI or against the practice level AI, which is I think pro or something. I don't know. He's not as good as legendary. They don't fight. They don't fight the same way as legendary. So they're not the same. It's like they, they fight similar to like hard or normal, but I tried against a legendary AI and I was only able to really finish the Travis Brown you saw at the beginning of the game was the legendary AI and I literally had to take a back seat and kind of wait till late game to really capitalize on it even as Overeem and Travis Brown is like the person who's the most acceptable to the body damage I literally had to wait until almost the fourth round with real-time clock before it was really effective so this strategy does feel a little bit underpowered especially for it having a perk that's specifically designated to it and, and people having that many combos and that many ways to get to your body it does feel underpowered especially for fighters like Anthony Pettis who have really hurt people with body kicks you know he finished Aroni with a body kick he pretty much finished bendo with several body kicks so you know and and uh overeem broke ben rothwell's arm with a body kick you know and, and he's he's murdered several people's bodies with knees but mostly i'm just talking about the roundhouse kick to be that el wapo threat that kick you right in your gut slow you down this strategy after doing the case study it's something it's something to kind of consider and it's something to look out for especially if you if you run into an overeem and you run into a couple body kicks like if you're the type of person who tries to time body kicks and counter them and you run into an overeem if he's got a beat on your timing and he knows that you're timing him and he catches you in counter hits several times with these body kicks that's gonna be when you're gonna when you're gonna find out if the strategy is good or not good but for my personal style i don't feel i feel like it's underpowered i feel like it could be more effective do more damage to the body not even do more damage, not do more stamina. Like when I say damage, I don't mean take more stamina. I just mean hurt them more, like make them physically hurt more. Body kicks, body shots hurt. Like body shots hurt and they take away your juice, they take away your wind, but in real life, body shots hurt. You don't feel punches to the head as much as you think you feel them. Like somebody hits you really hard, you really don't feel anything. You just feel dizzy and inebriated. Like your mind just kind of goes, your body just kind of goes on autopilot. But a body shot, you don't go on autopilot. You feel it the entire time. So when you get hit hard in the body, you feel it from the second the punch landed till the punch wears off. And <laughs> body shots are crucial. Just, just get that out there. Body shots are crucial. But let me know in the comment section if you like this type of video and you want to see me do more in-depth case studies based around other perks or other strategies or whatever. If you want to see more in-depth kick strategy, uh, in-depth strategies like this, because this video did take a lot of time. It took around four hours worth of time of just writing down the information that I was researching and getting it down into a written form, and then an hour of recording the fit the video feed, and then all the time it spent to uh, you know actually talk over the feed. So this is a fairly lengthy project, uh, and I kind of this is a passion project. It's a fairly lengthy the video that I made for you guys because I wanted to talk about this and take a look at it and kind of show and raise awareness that these are type of things that we can be doing with our picks we can be basing our picks around exact strategies and kind of counter minding our opponents you know kind of figuring out where we want to be versus an opponent because like I watched I've watched several of those ESL tournaments and when I watched those tournaments all I saw was basically mirror matches and I was just confused. I was like, mirror matches, why mirror match when you can literally try to find a strategy that is aimed to beat that person? Because I'm pretty sure there's counter picks and I'm willing to case study and study these things and try to see if I can figure out who is the counter pick or who is the natural strategy to beat this person or this fighter's, this fighter's statics, uh, you know, his statistics. Because really, that's what, you're, that's what you're fighting. You're fighting against that fighter's abilities, their statistics, because when it comes down to the best players you all have similar skill sets so you kind of have to go past that like you're not going to beat the same you're not going to beat the skilled players using just any strategy you almost literally have to take it out of their hands and put them in situations where they can't be successful you counter pick them and use things against them that they can't that there's nothing that they can do to prevent like if you find if uh, you're playing against the best player in the world he's playing a Cerrone and you're Anthony Pettis target that body because he can't do anything to protect it. I mean, he can protect it limitedly, but he can't stop you from getting to it. And if you strategize around getting to that body, you're going to you're going to be more successful because you strategize on another level, on another plane. And your opponent was just in there picking a character because they have good power stats, good speed stats or whatever. If you take whatever tool they have and figure out a counter strategy to take that away from them based on the weaknesses that their character has that's some upper level thinking that uh you know only only the truly great minds can do and that's that's where i'm trying to be that's why i'm studying so much that's why i'm reading through this stuff and bringing you guys as many as many in-depth lessons as i can uh that i can viably create and 
and that I think will be useful to you guys. So until next time, I'm Brian, the Apex Gamer Channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, and hopefully this gets you thinking and uh, kind of get us all thinking in the same direction. So until next time, see you guys soon. Peace.